This is where I know there is hope for the rest of the Palestinians, the rest of the Israelis that are not, that that not Jew, does not know Jesus yet. Because of people like us who were radically saved by his touch personally, and many, many Israeli, many Jews are seeing visions yeah. and dreams as well. Yeah. And I believe because we are living the end of time. This is the real end of time. What we are seeing today happening is really one of the signs of the end of time because it's not normal. The destruction that is taking place. Good evening and welcome to the Rosenberg Report. It's New Year's. We're heading into the end of 2023 and heading into 2024. Now it's been a very uh, dark and uh, very hard and bitter 2023 here for Israel and for Palestinians. As you know, we've been covering it from every possible angle. And tonight we're going to talk about what does the future hold for Israelis and Palestinians, particularly Palestinians in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. What does the post-Hamas world look like? If, and I hope when, Hamas is truly vanquished in Gaza, that doesn't mean they've been vanquished in the West Bank. The seeds of these ideas of radical Islamism, of the caliphate, everything that Hamas believes is still deeply embedded in the Palestinian people. So where do we go from here? And I can't think of anybody better to talk about it with than my friend Ta Sada. If you didn't see last week's show, go to RosenbergReport.tv, go to our YouTube channel and watch uh, my interview with Tas Sada and uh, find out about his book and get his book, Once an Arafat Man. Tas Sada was born in Gaza, 1951. Then his family moved to uh, Saudi Arabia. He was raised in Saudi and Qatar in the Gulf and decided to join the PLO and become a Palestinian radical terrorist. But Jesus Christ transformed him. And that's the story we talked about last week. And so he's got a unique an important perspective on what the future holds for Palestinians and Israelis. Obviously, you and I would not even be sitting here, much less in Jerusalem. You wouldn't even be allowed in Israel if you, if Christ Unless hadn't I changed sneaked you. in. Well, okay, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you came to Christ instead. So, Tas, um, after Christ got you, uh, uh, called you to himself and transformed you in the early 1990s. As you grew in your faith, you had a heart for pre preaching the gospel and discipling um, Palestinians of all kinds, but particularly Palestinian Muslims. And you've seen many Palestinian Muslims come to faith in Jesus Christ. You even moved back to Gaza uh, in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, um, but got driven out by Hamas when they came to power. The first story I want to ask you, and it's super important, is uh, the story of the, of the Hamas terrorist who was being prepared to be a suicide bomber and what Christ did in his life. Will you tell that story as we begin? This is one of the, it's really a very impacting story for me too, to see the, the hand of God. I know the hand of God worked in my life to bring me and seen many, but this particular Young man was really ready, shaved, you know, the suicide bomber, they cleaned themselves completely, mm -hmm. ceremonially and everything. And got the, the, uh, the like belt, vest. belt on and ready to go the next morning to blow himself up in Israel somewhere. Jesus appears to him that night and says, what? In a dream? In a, in a dream. He okay. was asleep. Wow. Getting asleep, yeah. And they said, the Lord spoke to him and said, what you are about to do is evil. I am Jesus. Follow me. He wakes up and he looks. He, seems that he sees the same person that he saw in the dream standing in that bedroom with him. And who was the person? To him. Jesus himself? Jesus himself wow. talking to him. He jumped out of the bed in his underwear and ran out of the street calling, Jinni, Jinni, demon, demon. Wow. Yeah. And, and for two years trying to find out who this Jesus is. Wow. And nobody's right, willing to- Not a lot of people who know Jesus in Gaza. Because of course he didn't do the operation mm -hmm. and Hamas was hunting him down. Mm. When we got wind of him and a friend of mine found out what it is and led him to Christ, explained to him and got him uh, 
the uh, communion after he gave his heart to Jesus. Wow. And baptized him in the bathtub, that same. Wow. And become a radical. I mean, I thought I was radical. He was more radical. Radically for saved, Jesus. you mean? Yeah. For, for, you both were radical. So this is one of the things that's interesting. Radical about this story. for Jesus. Right, radical for Jesus. So this is interesting to me because, because uh, again, most of my audience may not know the nuances, but there are two major uh, factions within the Palestinian political world. Mm -hmm. There's the Fatah movement, which was Yasser oh. Arafat. You were part of the Fatah movement. And then there's Hamas. Mm -hmm. Fatah, while there were radical Muslims a part of it, it was really a secular nationalist, Palestinian nationalist exactly. movement where Hamas was entirely right. a, a, a religiously driven radical Islamist radical movement. Radical Islam, yes. And so Hamas hates Fatah and Fatah hates Hamas. But you both hated Jews, you both hated Israelis, but Christ saved a Fatah radical. And now you're telling us the story of Christ saving and transforming a Hamas radical. You believe there's hope here, yes. but most people are not hearing the story in, in mainstream media for sure, but sometimes not even in Christian media, that God is moving this is, in, this, this, is, in this, this region. This is where I know there is hope for the rest of the Palestinians, the rest of the Israelis that are not, that, that not Jew, does not know Jesus yet. Because of people like us who were radically saved by his touch personally, and many, many Israeli, many Jews are seeing visions yeah. and dreams as well. Yeah. And I believe because we are living the end of time. Mm. This is the real end of time. Mm. What we are seeing today happening is really one of the signs of the end of time because it's not normal. The destruction that is taking place, first by the evil work of Hamas, mm -hmm. by uh, attacking uh, Israelis in a radical, very evil way, and naturally Israel had to respond mm -hmm. and and uh, defend himself. You think what Israel's doing is what has been Israel? Right. It, it is it is right, but in a in a in a. In other words, it had to be done. But yes, too many civilians are dying. It's been very very messy, very very painful. I'm not saying that every decision, yes. every moment has been it's right. Painful. But you support Israel's right of self defense. Absolutely, absolutely. Which is pretty amazing. I mean. I probably wouldn't have you on the show if you didn't think that, but on the other hand, <laughs> but the point is for a Palestinian um, friend of Yasser Arafat uh, and, a, and a former terrorist to to defend Israel's right to defend itself against Hamas is, is not a small thing. It's a big deal. But naturally, I'm not totally agreeing in the way that it's being okay. done yeah. with the, so many civilians sure. being killed. I'm not for that, yeah, but of course for Israel to defend itself, naturally, that's okay. the right thing. 